Can you look at me? I don't know what you're thinking. I'm going to do this without a background. Come. No pumpkin. Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and I'm bringing back an amazing guest, Julie Lowenstein, today. Uh, she will do a reading a little later on, and I'm super happy to be with you. I want to talk a little bit about grace. I think it's easy to forget the grace that we already have. You know, I just think when you're going 900 miles an hour, I'm saying this euphemistically, me, you, everybody, we're going 900 miles an hour. And it's so easy to see things that are not going well or right. However, if we just stop and take a breath, the truth is we're in a lot of grace right now. And I think a grace is akin to gratitude, right? That if we yeah, can right. remember the grace and gratitude that is already there surrounding us, all is well, all is truly well in this moment. And so that's where, I, that's really the theme of today's show is grace and gratitude, G to the second power. And the path <laughs> of grace begins today, G2. The, the source of grace already resides within our own awareness, and we don't need to go anywhere or search anywhere to find it. We only need to change our perception of what is already all around us. And we'll learn how gratitude shifts our awareness and choose to change our approach to others and the world. So this new perspective will reveal the grace that already inhabits our life. You can choose today to have a mantra, when I am grateful, I find my grace. It was Maya Angelou who said, let gratitude be the pillow upon which you kneel to say your nightly prayer. Again, when I am grateful, I find my grace. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane Heer, H-E-E-R. He does healing work all over the planet. He's an extraordinary man, and he works with accessconsciousness.com. If you're ready to do some massive healing and attend some fabulous classes, frankly, anywhere in the world, go to drdaneheer.com, as well as accessconsciousness.com. We love the work they do for everybody and their connection with us and support. So uh, Patreon, and by the way, thank you. People have been going to Patreon to donate. It means so much to me. Um, ha, that's my phone. I forgot to turn it off. Sorry. <laughs> um, that's going to be very obnoxious, but you're going to have to wait a second. Oh. <laughs> I love it. All right, thank you, bless you. I won't be able to edit this out, so we're just gonna keep it as is. Patreon, patreon.com slash dare to dream. Please donate to the show. And if you don't, the show is still here for you free. I interview successful, brave, and spirit-based leaders who share their insights, their wisdom, and their healing powers. So what would you do if you knew that you could not fail? Would you take it? Would you take the healing? Would you take the opportunity to move forward and grow and be completely free and bold? So if so, you want to be part of the Stare Dream podcast every week. And you have a big purpose to fulfill. That's why you're here. So at patreon.com slash Deb on the radio, you will support this show, whether it's the price of a cup of coffee or more. As you do this, it helps me to hire the right people, to get out the most professional show, to bring in the most professional, amazing guests. I've been going strong for 12 years, and your support to this nonprofit organization would be uh, most amazing, and it would be filled with grace and gratitude. So today, again, back is Jolie, Julie Lowenstein. She's a medium, a psychic, and a medical intuitive since childhood. She helps people through readings in person, on the phone, through photographs and artifacts, and she connects with family members and friends who have passed over. She also performs healing energy as a medical intuitive. She's got a big place in her heart for children with sensory processing disorders, and she helps heal unresolved issues. So it looks like we have a guest who has come on the show here right at the beginning. So Julie, if it's okay with you, I'll bring somebody on for a reading. That'd be great. That would okay. be great. Fantastic. 
Hi, Tony. You are on air. You are live. Hello. Hi. Nice to have you. Hi. And this is Julie Lowenstein. She's a medium. She's a psychic. She's a medical intuitive. It is great to have you. You're both dressed in the same shirt. I'm just I saying. <laughs> you, got the, you got the memo, Julie. I guess I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and we are just starting things out here. So, uh, so there's a lot that Julie can help you with as a medical intuitive. Also, if somebody is passed over, she prefers mm -hmm. that you don't tell her information. Okay. She would rather that it come and that she can talk to you about it. And Julie, I'm going to let you take over and guide Tony as to how she might ask a question of you and get this started. Okay, Tony. Uh, yes, if, if we want to focus on one specific area in your life that you feel needs, well, you may be unsettled with, or you have questions, or you're not understanding very well, uh, we can probably start there. And if you just tell me a little bit about what is troubling you or, you know, the, the subject, but don't go into much detail and we can start there. Okay. Um, okay. So I actually think one of the topics that's most pressing for me at the moment. Tony, you've got a microphone issue. There's a, a really loud noise when you speak. So yeah, quiet that down. Cause it's, is a, it's a buzzing. That's weird because it's the it's the webcam which typically works really well. Is it still happening? It is. Huh. Okay. Um, well, let me just unplug it and replug it. See if that helps. Okay. I might try a different USB port. I think there it went. I, I don't. I don't hear it. And folks who are listening and watching, just so we get some continuity here, Tony Marie is calling in for a reading with the psychic medium and channel medical intuitive julie and this is julie's second time on the show and i think we got good sound oh and my room matches you too there we go are we oh, good? good we're good i think please have at it okay okay um so i think an area where i have question at the moment is actually my romantic life so okay that uh that would work for you Yes, that would work for me. Awesome. And how's my sound now? Is it better? Yes. yes. Very good. Very good. Great. Okay. Good. Is there more you need from her, Julie? The puppy's crying in the background. There, come here. Hey, Tony. What? Tony, I can't edit this. This is live radio podcast. Yep. So let's just roll if, we, if okay. you don't mind. All right, let's go. Okay. So you're romantic like The only thing I need is if you can be a little bit more general, but tell me, are you wanting to know who's coming in? Are you wanting to know the status of? Um, what is status of? So I'm dating someone at the moment. Okay, stop. There you go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so when I get into the energy, I feel like the relationship, the core of it, they're showing me like the core of an apple and then the core, the inner part of a tree. So I feel like it's very solid and it's very rooted and it's very steady in the core of that relationship. However, on the outside, I'm getting, they're showing me the pictures of limbs swaying in the air and it's like a storm <laughs> and it's, it's coursed through this tree and it's just some of the leaves have fallen off. It's just tattered and battered. But in the middle of it, there's a core that I feel like is a, is a pretty awesome strength if you want to, if you latch into each other's energy, keep the communication, it has, a, it has a chance of growing its own roots per se and staying steady when the storm passes. Sometimes they'll give me metaphors, sometimes they'll give me pictures, and, but I'm hearing very loudly and clearly that you've been questioning a lot about the relationship. So there's a lot of steady, strong, and yeah, it has a relationship gone on for many years because it feels like that or an old soul connection. Um, it must be old soul connection then because it's okay. relative because, to the relationship. Okay, is this any relationship that you can, that you've had in your life previous to this? Is there any relationship I've had previously? Is that Yeah, where, you, where that would apply. Yes. 
Okay, because I'm feeling that the remnants of that relationship is possibly, no, it's not possibly, I heard absolutely, is may taint the relationships going further. Um, so when you make relationships with a new man or a partner going forward, that it may have a lot to do with, um, you might, in other words, you're carrying some of the storm into another relationship. And so even though that may not be in your conscious process, it's in your subconscious process. Um, I'm seeing the man that, the man that, that we're taught, that I'm talking about left a solid impact on your life. That's why I think I see the core of the relationship. The one I see coming in, it's more light and it's more airy and it's more uh, adventurous and it feels more, kind of like you need to roll with it and does that make sense to you yeah it does yes yes if you want any specific questions go ahead and ask me about this relationship or the past the one that i picked up because obviously it's having an effect yeah no i'm i'm good around the past relationship stuff i mean i think um you know it's always an ongoing dialogue right as we as yes. we transition to into new chapters in our lives Okay. Um, and I, I'm still in very good relationship with the the past, what, the guy from the past. or That's you know, the core. Yes, I get that. Yeah. That's the core. So, so that's not really a concern for me. Um, I do agree with you. I think that there are times when I, I measure other potential relationships against either, you know, the, the positive or the negative of, of the past yes and I guess part of what I'm wondering really mostly is like I'm really I'm just sort of dating at the moment and this is somewhat new with this new person and we've kind of fairly quickly fallen into a one one on one thing and I'm just kind of wondering whether that's like a good move for me or whether I really should be just kind of making sure that I'm dating a few people in order to have like a, a clearer point of reference. I see I three people to... coming in. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt you, but uh, I get the messages very rapidly and quickly. I'm so sorry. If, was there, did you want to finish with that? Yeah, no, just um, I, I pretty much had, so I'm good. Okay. No, I feel like it really would be great if you keep it light and I, because I see not only this gentleman, but I see two more coming in and I feel like you should keep it light easy breezy have fun with it enjoy it i feel like as you there's something unfinished from that previous relationship that requires you on this path to be able to enjoy yourself and fill that part of your soul to be able to ever get serious and the third relationship i'm seeing coming up in a j month and so but I feel like it won't be until uh, 12, I get number 12 and 18 months from now. So I feel like you really need to just, <laughs> they gave me a coffee pot and smelling the coffee. So th that old phrase, stop and smell the coffee, stop and smell the roses. I'm seeing roses, coffee. So when I see something like that, it means that you need to take it very light, very carefully, easy breezy is what I'm hearing, and enjoy each relationship for as it is. And that that third one coming in will be the one through the culmination of all these relationships to top that one, all those relationships off. And um, it will bring around the karmic relationship of the one I was talking back before originally. Um, and so it'll sew that karma up, so to speak, and you'll be able to start this relationship with a fresh, fresh perspective. He's almost younger. And if he isn't younger, about four years younger, I feel like he will act younger and have a very vibrant, bold personality in a good way. Um, he's going to be a love in your life that will pull out things in you that um, you didn't realize that you'd ever do before. You know, like when somebody skydives or somebody is on an adventure, they go camping and they really don't like it. I see that he pulls out things in you that you would think, eh. and, and this man 
will bring a lot of, in the good way, uh, adventure in your life. So that's why I'm, see, I'm seeing that these two relationships leading up to the third one needs to be kept really, really late. Does that, does that answer any questions? Yeah, it does. It totally makes sense. And that sounds like some pretty good news, actually. <laughs> it is. I feel like you deserve it. You really deserve it because things were pretty intense, even though I'm glad that you kept that relationship you know, a, a good relationship with that past relationship, because it's a good thing. Cause when you go forward, sometimes you can carry that with you. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing. Great. Thank you. And can you just reiterate the timing that you were, that you were stating just then? I'm curious about that. I didn't quite catch it. Sure. Sure. I see 12 months that he, you meet him. It's an acquaintance. It starts off as a friendship type of thing. And then by the 18th month you're in, I'd say maybe 13, 14 months. Uh, that's how I'm seeing the number and hearing it. Um, you, you know, there's something there. So it starts off as a friendship. What's that's the best way to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as you go, it's, I just feel that it's going to have a deepness to it, but the beauty of it is you're going to have that sense of adventure as well in it. And I think that's much needed in your life right now. Mm -hmm. um, you've had a lot of stress, a lot of stress in a certain area in your life, not to get personal, but I think you know what I mean. Uh -huh. And that stress, this relationship is going to be a breath of fresh air and the two that you date, it's going to be a, a really important for you to enjoy each one as it is and not get very serious minded with it. Is this the one? Is this the one type of thing? And just say, oh man, I'm just going to breathe and, and take the best out of it. And um, there's something to be with the law of attraction because I feel as you handle it this way, you're going to bring in that third guy and it's going to be a very, very good thing. Cool. And may I ask that reference that you gave Tony about the J month? So yeah. does that specifically mean it's June, July, or January? Or what? what no, that not January. Month? It'll be a, I'm sorry, it's going to be a J warm month. So July, June, July. Okay. June, July, and a warm month. And that's when you're anticipating the third person will be likely to show up. Yes, yes. Next, next June, July. I also see balmy palm trees and a travel. Uh, I feel like that <laughs> you're going to have to have an adventure there. I don't know if you're taking a trip in the next several months or something like that, but um, it's not California either. It's more feels oh, okay. like it's, I was just going to say I live in California, so it could be palm trees. No, right before, right? <laughs> no, it's not at all. Actually, it's not. It's, it's more has an island feel to it oh, uh, or, or a South American feel to it. Wow, Julie, you, you know, we can just talk any old time then. If you have <laughs> any good news each time, that's awesome. Yes. Really happy making. That's right, because you, you have been through a lot in the last year and a half, two years. Do you, yeah. Without going into what that is, I just want to ask on Tony's behalf, um, mm -hmm. is can you maybe give her some insight why it's happening? Either if there's something aberrant in her space that needs to be course corrected, or mm -hmm. if there was a particular soul journey that she needed to take around that. Great question. Great. Great question. Let me ask. I'm getting very, very much so. Okay, it's it's twofold. I saw one side and the other side. The one side of it is that it's a karmic, it's a karmic thing for you because what the relationships you've had in the past have been pretty intense. And you know, and some of them, not all of them, but you know the ones I mean, right? Correct? I see two. That were yeah, very, very intense. I have two ex-husbands. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. And oh, you know, both of whom there's been a lot of healing with, and yes, yes. Um, you know, and we're all good. And there's also been a, a lot of turmoil that we as people needed to grow through and move through. Right. But the important thing is that it's part of a healing. And I feel like this third relationship will be will be sewing all that up. It's in other words, it's they're showing me a cherry on top of a Sunday. And in this case, it means that all your hard work will be rewarded. All the hard work of healing, because you've you've taken the hard path of healing, meaning you've not always chosen the easiest healing methods or techniques to acquire that healing inside of your soul. Does that make sense to you too? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. 
And so it's been rather a painful journey, but believe me, it will be rewarded. And so in answer to your question, Deb, yes, it's kind of, it's a soul journey, it's both. And it's also, <laughs> they're showing me a huge stop sign, like between the, the, the two relationships you know you'll have, and then it's like you'll have a stop and you'll think, okay, where is this third guy? And I don't want you to do that at all because it'll lock the energy up. And we mm -hmm. all tend to do that, right? So when it, so in other words, there's going to be a pause between the second guy and the third guy. So you want to make sure you do the law of attraction breathing and uh -huh. say, it's coming. I'm not going to lock this up and wonder, but it's just a pause and I'm going to keep on going. And, and you will find this person in a, a social. It's almost like it's an outside gathering or a trip or something like that. Um, and, and you're not looking like, and, and it's just going to come out of left field. They show me the ball out of left field. So uh, I like this. I like this a lot. Does that make any sense to you? Does that add up? Yeah, all of that does. And it sounds like it's going to be an adventure. Yes. And yes, Tony, yes. do you mind if I ask another question on your behalf? <laughs> I'm channeling it. Tony. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, <feel free. laughs> I think sometimes we get too close to our own stuff and we don't even know what to ask. So I'm glad that's true. true. Thank you for Very trusting true. me. Well, I would like to ask if you have a message for Tony specifically around finances or career, anything that will um, help create some illumination in that area. Okay, with your career, uh, I'm seeing a sled, okay, a sled and then a hill. It's not a mountain, it's a hill. So a sled that, you know, an old fashioned sled and you're trying to pull it up the hill, you know, you know how you hate to go up a hill when you're sledding because it's so, it feels like so much work. Um, again, I feel like in your financial career, it's been in the last three to well, three to five years. So in other words, you're in that third year, it's like a five year cycle. So three years back, I feel like you started some sort of project or what in your career and you're carrying that, you know, pulling that sled up the hill and I feel like you're circling around, you're ready to lay on that sled and go down the hill. Um, I feel like your, your work will be rewarded and what you've done is um, slow but sure, slow but sure. And once it gets going, it's gonna build momentum and it's gonna go, it's, it's gonna go and when it goes, it may be even too fast. So you might even, when you do your affirmations, say, please, you know, let this occur by divine right and in divine right timing. So you won't get barraged all at one time. Does uh -huh. that make sense as to what you're doing? Yep, yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Good, because I really see whatever you're doing, it's going to benefit others. It, but it's also a he big healing, huge process for you. Uh, it kind of is it's surrounding what you've went through as a child. It's surrounding what you went through in womanhood. It's surrounding early womanhood. It's surrounding what you're going through now. And it kind of, you know, brings it all together in, in culmination. And then there's that reward of what your goal was, the end goal to that business. Great. Well, that's really encouraging, too, because, you know, as, as Debbie knows, it's been... Uh, it's it's been steady progress mm -hmm. and a lot of work to build my to build my business and my career as a as a coach so oh because i was going to say it's some form of entrepreneurship for sure yeah. because you don't because they showed a big backpack uh, as you carried that sled and mm -hmm. when you have that big of a backpack and that big of a load it's usually you're carrying it by yourself so mm -hmm. That's why I felt that it, you know, it's an entrepreneurship. I do feel like there needs to be a little adjustment to what you're doing. It's not a big, huge adjustment. It's when it comes to your audience, okay? So when it comes to your audience, you need to tweak it just a bit, get more input, more beta testing. There's something there that is wonderful and yummy waiting to be, you know, uh, ex uh, exposed and it needs to be and it's going to be wonderful but you need there's some kind of hook you need a little more hook into it does that make sense to you yes and and that's stuff that I'm working on at the moment in conjunction with a colleague so okay um, so that's good to know I'm curious to know do you have do you get any sense and feel for um, what my ideal audience would be okay
I'm getting loneliness. I'm getting that this would help people with loneliness. I'm getting that it would help people who are older in an older uh, group, like say not older, but you know, like fifties plus or 55 plus, because it needs to speak to people who are really going through trials in their life. And they might even scratch their head or cry and say, why is this happening to me at this point in my life? And I said, I'm channeling this. So that's why it came, it came through me like this. Why is this happening to me at this point in my life? I mean, they're very frustrated. And so it's going to speak to that audience, and you're going to have very clear-cut solutions to help them out of this loneliness and out of this juncture in their life, because I feel like it's going to uh, speak to people that have pieces torn apart, because I'm seeing shattered glass, and I'm seeing puzzle pieces that just fit really good, well together that are, have been pulled apart. So it might speak to grief. It might speak to intense anger that they've been holding on to because they lost someone, uh, whether by dating, uh, um, divorce, whatever. At, later in life, I feel like a lot of people are going through major changes and they're later in life where usually they would just say, oh, I'm too old. I'm not going to make any changes. I'm just going to sit here and ride this one out. And your audience, you're going to speak to that and very help them very much. Does that, does that make sense? Does that resonate? Um, it's interesting in the context that I, I literally just got off a, a call with with someone that's going to work with me and that person is going through exactly what it is that you have just described. Oh, good. Then, um, people usually come to me mostly through the doorway of career mm -hmm. um, and invariably we end up dealing with you know, things like loss and grief and past trauma and, and things like that. I have a broad tool set, so I'm able to help people resolve a lot of those historical things that may still be interfering with their ability to, to do what they need to do. I'm hearing music. I'm hearing music so loud I can't almost stand it. It's like piano music and it's music and then it's all different kind of music, like a symphonic music. And it's like, is music a part or sound a part of this healing or the healing? Um, Yes, in the context that um, I am a rapid transformational therapist and hypnotherapist. So I use music in conjunction with the hypnotherapy that I do when I provide people with recordings. Yes, because I'm getting that it has to do with the megahertz. It has to do with the tone. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you, and you really have tapped into it. You're, you're excellent. You've, you've tapped into what music does and it puts us in a certain, I'm channeling it, so I have no idea what I'm talking about, that it puts us into a certain kind of state and you've tapped into what that state needs to be and you've seen so much change and good, good, good transformation and a difference in people's attitude and emotional healing just by using certain sounds and certain certain instruments. If you haven't, I'm sure you have maybe, because I feel for sure you have, but you know that certain instruments emit certain, um, certain frequencies and bring about certain states. And when people are in certain states, there is easy to speak to and get them to heal. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Cause I'm kind of a geek about these things and I custom engineer everyone's recording. For oh, them. whoa. <laughs> so, That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That's so wonderful. That's what really does help shift things for people, you know, and create and create um, permanent new patterns as opposed to, cause the repetition of course is really important when it comes to creating permanent change. And when you said repetition, I saw a, a coat, a zipper and a coat. <laughs> And it's kind of like, you know, you're zipping it up, zipping it up, and it, you know, when you do that to the zipper right. so it doesn't come down. Yeah. So whatever technique you have in that hypnotism arena, and you cinched it. That's what they're saying it means. You cinched mm -hmm. it, and, and you feel that in, all, in your whole body. I feel like you really mm -hmm. feel that. And You're right. Everybody goes through in their older age what we were just talking about, but but the healing is going to be really, really, really intense and everlasting. And there's not exactly a modality like yours. I feel like it's very unusual. And it also needs the presence. It needs more exposure and the right venues. 
to be able to draw people into this. I feel like that's what you're working on is how to, how do I bring my audience to me? Uh, because what you have is pretty spectacular. I would agree. I've spent and unique, unique training. Yeah. And I've got like certifications and qualifications up the yin yang and, <laughs> and a lot of different tools. So <laughs> if what I do is very unique and very specialized to each individual because I have actually, some tools we can deal with whatever shows up. Right. So, right. Because actually, I mean, then when I said that I saw babies, I mean, I feel like that you could almost spend that, that musical ability in your that you're using for your hypnotism you could almost use that as a cd and or you know some kind of music channel that they people can tune into or they can listen to it and it would calm babies that have colic or it would calm babies that have chronic conditions or um does that make sense to you does that resonate um only in the context that I have a client who was recently telling me that she's doing a fertility workshop that okay. she was considering and potentially inviting me to. So. Wow. Oh my God, please do. Please do. <laughs> because oh I really God. feel that you haven't even tapped into, you have not even tapped into the other ways that this can be used. And so I know you have to focus on one group yeah, so and get going life. before you branch out, right? Yeah. But, but yeah. what I'm saying is I see a horse with blinders. So whatever you do, you're very open-minded, but I'm not saying that. What they're giving me is this, the horse blinders. And that means, you know, as you feel like you're getting really good traction with this older age group, and then this mother comes in or the fertility, women with the fertility issues come in, then your blinders are going to start going like this and you're going to be, you're going to have a tendency to go here and then here and then here. So mm -hmm. just notice when you're feeling like that, remember with the affirmation by divine right, divine grace and divine right timing. Because I feel like once this goes, once this goes, start going, you know, going heading down the hill. Oh my, that's when oh. you're going to really have to say, Oh, whoa, stop, stop, stop. You know, I need to focus here first and here first. That's beautiful. We have to go to a break, but I'm okay. so grateful. This was such a nice piece. And I really wanted Tony to get like a, a cake, not just a slice today. <laughs> um, we have to get back to the show, but I thank you so much for coming on and asking these questions and being willing to receive from Julie. And Julie, obviously that was really awesome <laughs> and seemed very <laughs> spot on. I couldn't believe the whole thing about the babies and then Tony's saying she's just been invited to do a workshop around fertility. I mean, that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that so is. blessings and thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. And thank you, Debbie, for facilitating that. It was awesome. Pleasure. I hope you got a lot out of it. You did. Bye. Bye for now. Well, you're watching, you're listening to Dare to Dream podcast. I'm a media visibility strategist. I help you create a unique presence through coaching to write your book, get your book to a guaranteed international bestseller and get scheduled on media interviews. If you would like a free gift from me on how to become the go-to expert by using media interviews for free, go to debbiedashinger.com. D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R and download your gift from me. So if you're tuning in after we started, this is Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream. I'm interviewing psychic, medium, and healer, Julie Lowenstein. Again, her, uh, actually, I didn't give this out before, so let's give it out now. Her website, Minds Eye Medium, Minds Eye Medium. <laughs> <laughs> It has a flow somehow in there. Yeah, I want to ask you, um, yeah, one thing we've never talked about before is animal healing. Oh, wow. And I know that's really big in your space. It's not something we've played around with much here. But what is that like for you? I have to say, as a human, I'm frustrated because I've got my dog. And there are times I would absolutely love to hear her. I actually feel like she understands me, but mm -hmm. I, and I feel like on a sensitivity level, I understand her. 
But at a really in-depth level, a real deep communication, I don't. And I wish so much I could hear or understand her. So what is that like for you? How do you communicate? How do you receive? How do you know it's valid? You know, it's quite interesting that you say that. When I when I'm working with small animals, it's 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 very quick, it's very interesting because the larger the animal, it's almost like the bigger the hit. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean that sounds funny, but it's the way it is. Um when I'm around smaller animals, it will come very um uh, very quick very quick hits, very intense hits, and you can he almost hear them, I know I do hear them, what they're feeling and what they're thinking. And I know that kind of sounds corny because we look at the animal and think, how can she know that? But usually people will say, oh my God, what you just said, it looks like the animal's just saying that, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's a really cool feeling because a lot of times they have issues or problems. Let's say they, I don't know, like a cat is having urinary problems and so, but they don't know it and the cat's urinating, right? And so they're, they're thinking, oh my God, she's acting out. She's doing this. She's doing that because she's, well, yeah, sometimes they are pissed off for a better word, right? So they're going to do act out that way. Other times, it's sometimes a really organic condition where there might really be something to the, um, you know, the urinary issue, right? So I can, by, by being a medical intuitive, I can sense what that is. If it's a medical or, you know, physiological reason, or if it's an emotional reason. So with animals, I get pretty much like humans. Is this con you know, condition is it organic and physiological or is it emotional because so much is going on in this house that, hey i want some attention kind of like a kid um then with horses that's a whole different story in the way that there's a lot of abuse in the horse world and so that was uh hard to there isn't all animal all the animal world and the human world but especially with horses a lot of people rescue horses or buy horses from a not ideal situation or they've raced and now they're stopped they've stopped mm -hmm. then when they try to get the horse to do something he won't do it or he's having hoof issues or whatever and so i'll go and lay my hands on the horse and get his uh first i get his emotional state and how he's feeling and thinking so the psychological and then after that then i start focusing on the physical they guide me to the physical and then just by channeling, I put the um, organic, the physical, with the emotional and psychological, and then the answers start rolling and I start channeling those out like that. And Can you give it, us a story, like a, a, a sort of an arc of a story, somebody who came okay. to you with an animal issue, small, medium, or large, and a way that you were able to communicate with that particular animal and maybe a successful outcome? Okay, sure. Especially with a, a horse I had uh, last fall. Um, the client came to me and said, oh my gosh, my gosh, you know, he's not wanting to really move out of the barn. I moved him. He, I, she didn't tell me she moved him to a new barn. And she said, I'm having trouble even getting him out of the barn. And when he gets out of the, out in the, you know, the grazing area, um, or the riding area and he sees cows, he freaks out and he's just not moving, you know, for me. And I didn't, I'm just frustrated with that. And then they picked up some condition in his leg and they're wanting to give him all these drugs. I really need your help. So when I got into that horse's energy and this was uh, remote, this was in California, I was in Ohio. And wow. so I looked at the picture of the horse and what the, what the vet said was wrong with him. I didn't want to know any information. So what the vet said was wrong with him, I, which I didn't know yet, I picked up uh, uh, this condition called side bone, and I had no idea what side bone was. So I just started explaining to her and explaining to her where it was in the hoof and what the hoof looked like and how inflamed it was. I uh, See, I'm closing my eyes naturally anyway. It's funny. Um, and so I tapped into what was wrong with him physically. And so right away, she told uh, another vet, she trusted, and he said, it can't be side bone. It can't be. She said, just go with it. So he did, and they went with side bone. Another vet came in and did another x-ray, and it was side bone. And so for a year and a half, they had been treating their own condition. 
Then she said, he's just so obstinate. She, I said, you know, I don't know how to say this because when I channel, I just say it. I can't control it really. And I just said, there's something that upset him horribly. And I said, it's with you and you've upset him terribly. And he's really, really, really emotionally upset with you. And he's not getting over it. And she goes, well, I don't know what the, and then she said it like that. And she said, oh my gosh. She said, I just told him three weeks ago, if he doesn't get with the program, he's going to end up being a lawn ornament. And so, oh. <laughs> but she didn't realize she said it because she was so frustrated with the bills and with him not, you know, responding to her like she was used to him doing that. Sure. And he was mad because he was in a different place and I didn't, you know, and so you know, it just went on and on. But basically that was a really big uh, incident that uh, the horse turned around significantly after that. And was there anything to do with the cows? Was there actually a reason why the horse got weird around the cows? He, it's the stare of the cows because <laughs> when I physically saw this horse a few months ago, because uh, I couldn't get it either, really, because I, I just kept getting, it's the stare of the cows, the stare of the, I said, what in the world does that mean? She said, oh, you'll see. So I looked, and, and we, we kept him there, and he looked off into the field, and he sees the cows, and they all kind of stare, pierce through him. <laughs> so he turns yeah. around, and he takes off. And so we're working with him now to desensitize him to the cows, and it's not been an easy thing, but... I think it's a past life experience with the cows. How interesting. Did you ever think to work with the cows and just say, stop staring? <laughs> yeah, I did say that actually. And not so nice terms though. Yeah, like, <laughs> Maybe that's out. why they didn't cooperate, right? They're like the bullies on the playground. Like stop staring. It's freaking them out. Yes, that's true. Give it's a horse true. a break. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, so, that's pretty um, cool. So the horse has been healed. The side bone is healed. And yes. the, the rift between the owner, so to speak, owner and pets, that's terrible. But you know, the, the human, the rift has been healed and the horse knows that's not actually ever going to happen. And so now there's a lot of peace and healing there. Yes, because he was afraid she was going to get rid of him. That was his biggest fear. And so I told her what I channeled, what to tell her that that would help him because I wouldn't logically know. And so I channeled what, what it was that he needed to not be that fearful. And then she start really talking to him. I love you. This is going to work out that type of thing. I channeled it. So I don't really remember, but she did some intense work with him psychologically and um, she changed his feet. I also got, that his feed was causing an inflammatory condition in his body and not allowing the side bone to heal. Um, so she put more vitamins I channeled uh, into the feed and changed up the feed and it's helped him significantly. It's, he's come a long way. So it's, mm. it's, it's, that was very, um, a very unique experience, but a very pleasant one. Nice. Yeah. Is there a tip, Julie, that you would give people today on how to thrive and how to just enjoy their life. So I guess what I'm looking for is a general cha channeling for our listeners and viewers. And whatever is happening on the planet right now and to humanity right now, if there is an overall message for us to really be able to just love our life and move into that grace and gratitude, Right, and right. I thrive right now. What would that message be from either the all that is or our angels, God, collective guides that we need to hear and to implement? I'm trying that. Is that okay? Please, yes, that would be great. Wow. Okay, it's interesting answers for what's all going on, right? Um, live in the moment live in the moment don't live in the past so many of us are living in the past so many of us are looking to the negative the negative because all we're hearing and seeing is a lot of negative so basically it's living in in the moment and and pretty much 
turning, tuning everything out, basically, uh, TV, radio, and, and at least silence your mind for a good 20 minutes, even an hour or two a day, meaning listening to music that brings you pleasure, pleasure uh, doing hobbies that bring you pleasure, really looking at your job, really looking at your home life, looking at things, making lists in order to be able to stay in that present moment and to be able to release the past because that is that is the biggest disturbance I find in readings and in what I'm channeling is that so many so many of us have been battered up as you will that it's really that we're not taking enough time for ourselves to be silent and sit with ourselves and enjoy ourselves and in, in order to then go out in the world in our jobs and socially and be able to be in, in pre present in a more calm state in a more open state in a more positive state to spread more positive, more joy, more happiness. We're, uh, we're uh, inundated with too much noise, too much information. And sometimes it's about getting back to the soul, aligning the body, mind and soul and, and finding out who we are. And sometimes we not like, might not like who we are, uh, but we have so many tools to be able to change it and to live in the moment and live in grace and live in acceptance. Whoa, I heard that very loudly. To live in acceptance and not try to put a square peg in a round hole in our relation, our romantic relationships and our financial relationships with ourselves and money, um, with our health, you know. It's, so it's, I feel like as we sit in silence and we get to know ourselves, and like I said, it doesn't mean to sit there and meditate for two hours a day. It means to spend time with ourselves at least a 15 minutes a day. And then on the weekend or when you have more time, do another two or three hours here and there and, and really get to know yourself and, and to be able to live in that grace. That's nice. what I'm getting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that feels really right. Yes. I'm and sometimes our... Yeah, our outer circumstances, what, what our home looks like, what our life looks like, isn't measuring up to what's inside. Mm. And I see that quite a bit. And I also channel it quite a bit uh, for people. Hey, is what you're feeling inside and you look around adding up? Is it, is it matching? Is it matching? Beautiful. Yes. I, I know you're a medical intuitive. Uh, I have something going on in my body and I would just love if you could address that. And um, yeah, I'd like to know if there's a graceful way that that could be altered and okay. made healthy. Okay. I immediately got, without getting personal, I immediately got like the pelvic area and then your low back area. Does that make sense? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, because I'm, I, I'm it's, and it's nagging. I mean, I'm always feeling like the pelvic, the pelvic area pain is radiating from your back as well. So it's kind of like the, is your low back giving you a nagging kind of, it's like a sharp shooting at times and then it's nagging. And then you also feel that same soreness in the, in the front. Does that make sense? A thousand percent, that's what's going on. I have. Okay. I've had soreness I've been dealing with anyway okay. in the lower back area, but it has now become full blown sciatica. Oh. And it starts where you're describing the pelvic area, the lower back area, and then it radiates right down in the front of my left leg into my foot. And it is chronic. It's just been going on a week, a week and a half, but it's chronic and the chiropractor hasn't healed it. And all the CBD oils and the, you know, different yeah. wonderful things I'm using, like Arnica, nothing's touching it. Okay. So I would just really like to, and I'm talking to my body too, like it's okay to heal, it's okay to unwind, but there's, I know it needs my attention and I don't know what I am to do. I do. <laughs> I do. I got it. I got it right away. Awesome. Um, okay. So channeled it's like you felt like so much is on your back you've had in the last three months especially six months ago but the culmination of this problem started three months ago mm -hmm. and you've been feeling like you've had 
pretty much not a monkey on your back, but they're showing me the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> they're showing me the Leaning Tower of Pisa. They're showing me very, <laughs> you know, very, very strong, tough structures, right? That have withstood the test of time. I'm channeling this. And so it's almost as if they're, no, they are saying they corrected me. Okay, enough already. You know, you've been, so instead of being nice and saying, I'm healing this and this and that, now you need to get gruff and say, okay, I know I've thrown a lot on you, but now you need to straighten up and release it because I don't need this load anymore. So it's correct. Who am I saying that to? Who am I? Am I saying that to my body? Oh, my (laughs) body. Your body and your back, because you're going to say, I need this handled. This is enough. Mm. No, I can, I can handle what's on my back. Okay. Mm. So now I need you back and I need you physiologically body to deal with this and help me to know how to deal with this because I am ready for it to be gone. It is gone. And, and now it's going to feel very light, like a very light block of load, you know, like a block of, oh, they're showing me like Lincoln logs and they're showing me like little wood blocks that are very light. And so you need to picture when you close your eyes at night and then before you get up in the morning, picture your spine being very light and that the spaces between it are very, uh, picture gold and purple and white like going around each disc and then down your leg that the pain radiates down and then just say, I need this gone. It is gone. I know it's gone. I don't need the load. It's gone. The heavy load is gone. Mm. So you need to get gruff with it, Deb. I can do that. I have gruff inside of me. <laughs> really? <laughs> I do. I can demand of the universe and of my back for sure. And that was so beautiful. The, uh, the purple and the white and the gold all together. Like, uh, I yes. just feel that as you were saying that. Um, awesome. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to employ that. Like Good. ASAP. And I'll let you know how it goes. People think that they have to be more gentle when they talk to their body. And that's sometimes that's really true. Mm. If it's heartache and they're having heart issues, yes. Um, If they're having grief issues, sometimes I channel that it it is to be light with it. But if it's not going away and the person passed away for two years and they're having all these chronic conditions, it's more like sometimes not all I get channeled that they need to be more gruff with it and more putting their staff in the ground and I've got this under control type of feeling. Yeah. I like that. This is my life. This is my body. (laughs) No more. And I really do feel like that. I feel like I am at the precipice of like, yeah, this has to change because it is true. I have been shouldering a lot, if you will. Yes. Um, you know, plus courses and homework and I'm generating a lot of new things and, and it has been like um, catching my breath and remembering I can do this one step at a time. It's not forever. You got this. You know, it's creating amazing things. And, and then there's extraneous things, you know, my mom's health and a, a relationship and, you know, career stuff. And, and it's all been like a lot in a soup. So um this going on too is just kind of that's breaking the camel's back like okay this is not cool and it's stopping me from working out that's one of my greatest joys to lift weights and thing right right i can i can understand that and just picture that right white gold and purple light starting at the base of your neck and where your brain stem would be and then wrapping it around picture it like cotton candy and and sparkly gold sparkly white and then it goes from the, you know, your, the very top of your C1 spine all the way down to your neck, all the way down, and then, you know, to your thoracic spine, all the way through your lumbar, then all the way to the tip of that spine. Okay, then there's another thing called the Akata Aquina. Akata Aquina. You want to picture the gold, purple, and white light from the middle of your, a little bit higher than the middle of your belly button there. And then picture it coming down as that as well until the very tip of your spine. Are you feeling anything with that? Yeah, a lot of, 
Release. And I feel like you need stretching as well because I feel like you're so tensed up that you need to know how to stretch the bottom part of your body, more like a Pilates type of thing. And, <laughs> I yeah. did Pilates class this morning. Oh, really? Have you yeah. been doing that a while or not? No, I switched because I can't do all the weightlifting classes right now. It just it kills me afterwards. So, yes, I took Pilates. And I've even been looking up on YouTube um, some, you know, like advanced yoga things that mm -hmm. I stretch every morning for five to 10 minutes, but I mm -hmm. think this is going to take the body into a, a new space. So I feel like you're confirming what I was downloading already. You're right, because I feel like actually the Pilates, it will, it's a better moda modality for what's going on in your life emotionally and psychologically and spiritually and physically it's going to take that load off it's going to stretch mm. you know because i saw these heavy structural beings right in your spine it's going to stretch it out so it can be light and prepare it to be light so i really feel that you should stick with it for a good year and still be able to be physical of course but um get six months six i know you're not going to like this six months off and just six months heavy pilates right build it build it up gradually gradually because i feel like your muscle tone is going to be so much better not that because I feel like when you work out, you're, you do it pretty intensely. Um, and your body's not wanting that hard, heavy hitting right now. It's kind of wanting that smooth stretching, smooth stretching, and building muscle that way, more like an isometric. Oh, body. You are so. Yeah, I know. It's, right? I know. Right. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Believe me, I get it. <laughs> yeah, but thank you. Um, that feels really, really, really right. So um, I'm not going to resist. And of course, that's the interesting thing about when you feel unwell or something goes uh, and makes you, it's kind of impotent because I'm not able to affect a change thus far. I think the surrender flag gets raised and it's like, okay, okay, I wouldn't have done this before, but since <laughs> nothing else is getting better, I'll do it. I'll do whatever That's you want. That's a good recommend. way to put it. That's a very good way to put it because, you know, sometimes we're so hard on ourselves, right? That we don't surrender. And then that's when we really get in trouble because yeah. we're, we're, do, we're going against what our inner being, our inner self's telling us, right? Yeah. So, take yeah. It easy. It's like that ego song, take it easy. <laughs> so, yeah. Julie, uh, this is the end of the show, and I thank you for sharing your brilliance. Is there anything you want to say to the listeners and viewers right here at the end? Hmm. I like your message of grace, and I like your message of what do we need in the world, or what do we need inside of ourselves that you could help people with, right? It's more, the, my message is really, really don't be afraid to be in quiet and don't be afraid to be with yourself. Because honestly, in a lot of my readings, so many people are afraid to be alone with themselves. Mm -hmm. And I know that, you know, when you're really an independent person, you know, you're thinking that, oh, I'm an independent person, I'm fine with it. No, not really, because some people really don't know how to be by themselves. And so my message is, because I've been getting a lot of readings like that lately, a lot, a lot of run on that, actually. And so mine is to, the message is to say, get so in tune with yourself and so comfortable that when you're standing in the presence of somebody else, no one will intimidate you. No one can make you as angry as they usually do. When you're in tune with yourself, there's great forgiveness that occurs. Um, and when you, you, you control your surroundings in a way that it matches what's going inside, like I said before, this is all part of it. And I'm, the reason I'm bringing it up is because, like I said, I've had a lot of run in readings with this lately, that people have such high anxiety, you know, or they they're have such anger or there's such resentment and such blame that, they put, that people put on them or they put on other people, you know, that type of thing. So it's just to be able to be happy with themselves at the bottom line. I love that. And I just want to acknowledge, I feel like in that particular space, mm -hmm. I have come so far in the last two plus two and a half years, like <clears throat> my year. Yeah. Because I used to, this lonely thing and this, discomfort with being alone was pretty big. I'm an extremely social person and, and 
I knew logically being alone is a really good thing to fill, but it was also right. what I would want to fill it with was still a lot of noise if I had to be alone, you know, TV, anything to keep it right. going, but to just be alone. Hmm. And right. yeah, I just feel like being alone actually has become something I rather love and treasure. Right. And don't you feel more in control and situations that used to make you feel comfortable? Just, you know, either uncomfortable or you would meet up against people that would cause you to, uh, some angst inside. But do you feel that now that you've gotten that piece of your personality and psychologically you're at that point, do you find that things on the outside, um, you're, you're, less t you're, you're less tolerant of certain things, but you're more tolerant of the big picture? Hugely so. Exactly, exactement, because I have in the arc of what's happened and finding my space alone and really loving that, I also concurrently found my voice. Uh, and I got to a point where I was able, or frankly, I should say, I've always been able, but I chose to use my voice. And that's everything from expressing how much I love and appreciate people. And very importantly for me to be able to say, this doesn't work, no more, that, you know, in, a, in many realms. And, and I've been really surprised at how well things have turned out when I've used my voice. You know, the fear, I think for most people, it certainly was for me, is God, if I use my voice, they're gonna leave, right? They won't be my friend, they won't be my lover, they won't be my client, I'll be alone. Yes, I know what you mean. And I found completely the opposite. I found actually people had mad respect for me for saying what I did. They appreciated understanding a dynamic was, that was going on and something they were doing. Um, and often they acknowledged, you're right, I'm off here. You know, let's start something else. And it was really empowering for me. But I have to, I just want to say in all honesty, even if they had left, it still would have been okay. That's where I had to get to within myself. Like whatever happens as a result of me speaking up, so be it. But I know I have great communication skills. I'm not gonna attack someone. I'm not gonna curse at someone. It's not my deal. Right. To have a voice, yes, and to be able to be with myself, very big. It is huge. And you know, knowing you, I haven't known you all that long, but I, I, I do, did know immediately that you were a very strong, independent, beautiful spirit inside and out. And I, if you had told me that at that moment, because if I didn't have the ability I have to read people and I would just see you and meet you, I would have never guessed that in a million years that you ever felt that way, ever, yeah. ever. So you did a lot of work and I, I mean, you really did. That's so great that you, you while well, it's living in your truth, living in your truth and it really shows it really shows it does. thank you oh. and for all of us it's such an amazing process being alive right we don't ever yes. start growing and healing um, and making new awesome choices so thank you for once again an amazing show julie and for really oh, thank you it. thank you thank you so much you are amazing. And oh, I end today's you. show with these reminders. Proceed as if success is inevitable. And when you own your voice, you own your power. Next week on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Sharon Lynn Wyeth. This is also her second time in the show. She does name readings, OMG. If you haven't heard her before, I am telling you this woman, crazy town. Wait to hear Sharon. She does readings based on a system called namology. You can bring in someone you are involved with, family, friends, just you, uh, co-workers, lovers. It doesn't matter, partners. But she can tell you everything about you and this person, good, bad, problems you should look out for, graces that you'll have. So this is big transformation conversation. Definitely join us. If you'd like to receive these videos right in your inbox once a week-ish, you can subscribe to youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. Deb on the radio at YouTube. That's right. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream.